Now let's see, let's see what this means if you try to make a graph. So let's make, let's say this is T and this is Q of T. How does the plot of that function looks like as a function of time? For example, let's start at t equals to zero. If you substitute t equals to zero into that equation, what do you get? Zero, right? So it means that at t equals to zero, there is no charge on the capacitor, which makes sense. As charge is going to build up on the capacitor, Can this increase forever? No. This cannot increase for forever because if you understand what a capacitor is, again, when T goes to infinity, what does that give me? So you're taking an exponent of, an, of negative infinity yeah. becomes zero. So do you see that eventually this is just gonna flatten and that value right there. So it's gonna flatten at, at this value here. And so it means that if the maximum charge that you can store in the capacitor is given by this quantity there. Now you can also make a graph here of the current. So how is the current changing with time? So I of T. You remember that the current is derivative of the charge with respect to time. So if you take the derivative of this function here, you get um, C epsilon times one over RC C over RC. Now the R is going to cancel, so this is just going to, the C is going to cancel, so this is E over R. Now, if you plot this at t equals to zero, you notice that there's a current and then eventually this will go to zero. So the current is going to start from some maximum value here, which is equals to e over r. Eventually, this is going to go to zero. So this goes to zero when the, the capacitor. It's fully charged. Okay, now, um, let's look at this and then we'll just wrap this up. So let's look at, so there is a quantity tau, so this is pronounced as tau. And this tau is given by, this quantity is R times C, and this is called the time constant. Now this is called the time constant because whenever you take T is equals to R times C. So whenever T is equals to R times C, then notice that your Q of T is going to be C times epsilon is one minus E to the negative one. 
and e to the negative one. So e to the negative one is about 0 0.3. So all of this is about 0. It's about 0 0.67. So, so this time, so think about is the time that it's going to take for the capacitor to charge up to about 67%. So at T equals to that, the charge on the capacitor is about 67% of the value. And so in this section here, as I said, you don't need to worry about deriving any equations, but you need to know how to use this equation right here, this equation. This will be the key equation in this section right here. And what I'm going to do now is that I want, I'm going to show you one example. So we'll plug in some numbers into this equation here. So let's plug in some numbers here real quick. So let me just open this real quick so that we can wrap up this section. Now, let's suppose that we have a, an RC circuit where the charging voltage is equal to 12 volt, and this is connected to a capacitor. The capacitor has a capacitance of, um, let's see, let me look at my notes here. 330 microfarads, and this is connected to your resistor that has a value of uh, 50 kilo ohms. Now let's calculate the Maximum charge, so Q max is given by that. Now you plug in the numbers, you should get 3.96 times, 3.96 times 10 to the negative three. That's a maximum charge. And then calculate how long So how long does it take for me, for the, for the capacitor to charge up to 0 0.5 of its maximum value? Now, if I want to solve this equation here, I go into this equation, so my Q of T is equals to this into one minus E to the negative T over RC. So the first thing is, is that I want to calculate my R times C. So my R times C, if you substitute the values, you should get um, 16.5 seconds. And so I need, I need my Q of T to be equal to that. So if you just substitute, you should substitute this 0 0.5 C times epsilon should be equal to C times epsilon into one minus e to the negative t divided by 16.5. And then if you solve this equation here, this c times epsilon would cancel with this c times epsilon. Do you guys see that? So this would be 0 0.5 is equals to one minus e to the negative t over 16.5. So solving this equation here, if you take the one to the left side, you get negative 0 0.5. And 
as opposed to negative infinity and negative infinity over 16.5. Now, this negative is going to cancel with that negative there. And so your t over 16.5. So you end up with this final equation here. So So the final, so this negative, so e to the negative, e to the negative t over 16.5 is equal to 0 0.5. So solve that equation and then we'll talk about, you can just take the log of both sides and then you solve.